Okay, so let's take a more real life example. We are loading up a loop up here on this track and we have another compressor already loaded up on that loop. And again, we have our recorded output down here. And we see we have quite a bit of dynamics inside of this loop. We have quite loud elements in the beginning and then we have this little bongo thing here, which is a bit quieter. Also, our offbeat hi-hats in these positions appear a bit too quiet compared to our kick sound in the beginning. So if we take this quite dynamic loop and place it into our track, we are facing the problem that quieter parts will be sort of eaten up by other elements of the track. For example, this quiet part here would have problems to stand out. So in order to have these parts stand out as well, not only the kick, we need to make these parts louder without further increasing the loudness of those most prominent parts of the loop. And this is where we are using a compressor again. So we are using a ratio of 5 to 1. Um, we have a release time of 100 milliseconds, so moderate release time and a very short attack time at the moment. And now I'm dragging down the threshold to kick in the compression. So let's take a threshold of minus 17 to emphasize on what we're doing since everything has been quite substantially reduced here, um, putting up the output gain of our compressor. So now it's very visible what happened. For example, here with this last bit of audio, you can see it compared to this part up here, it's a lot louder while the kicks still remain more or less equally loud to those ones up here. If we AB this quickly, we can note the difference. So we are getting more flat dynamics, like in our first example at the beginning of this tutorial. So let's go even further and take the shortest possible attack. And you see, right now, we've taken out a lot of the dynamics in this sample down here, and it's very, very flat. Now, if we bring gradually more attack into this loop, we're adding in more dynamics. Like our transients are cutting a lot better through the mix now and the loop appears to have more punch. So now this is a pretty extreme setting for such a loop. We can still go back and AB this to the original version. And now let's set up a more realistic setting for changing this dynamic loop into a more evened out version.
So now we have a more even version of this loop as you can see and here um, like the comparison if we a b this playing it with and without the compressor is fairly obvious now. Let's do it again. We have those high dynamics here with the original one we barely hear those bits in the end of the loop but we heavily hear the kick and this kick and the clap here. And in this part it sounds a lot more evened out if we put the compressor back in. So if we AB those two loops here with the compressor we perceive the second loop a lot louder um, because our ears are more sensitive to the average loudness than to noticing differences in peaks. And let's quickly check that in an analyzer, like how much louder is it actually? We have a peak meter here and this peak meter says we are peaking at around minus 4.8 decibels with our compressed loop and now I'm taking off the compression and we can check that for our initial source loop. And actually as you can see the source loop with minus 3.4 decibels is is a lot louder still than the second loop. But if we listen back to the second one, and we can even still increase it a little bit in the output. Like for example, one decibel would be possible here. Minus 3.5 for the source and something like minus 3.6 for the compressed loop. And actually that compressed loop sounds a lot louder to our ear than the other one. And as mentioned, this is due to the fact that our ears are more sensitive to average loudness than to peaks. And what we are measuring here is peaks. And due to this average loudness perception, compressors are mostly mentioned when we are talking about adding loudness, which is kind of counterintuitive because in the, in the beginning we are always reducing the gain. But in the end we are bringing the, the average signal up even further. And this is the adding loudness part. Hi, my name is Francois and together with my friend Tom, I'm running a channel and website called Production Music Live. Sometimes I'm lying, I'm just lying, I'm still lying here with you Have you ever had trouble finishing your tracks because you got stuck while trying to achieve a great sounding mix? Today we are going to mix this song from start to finish. And if I lose myself What if I lose myself to you? We will enter the different mixing stages, we will go into detail on state-of-the-art mixing techniques and we will learn about the theoretical concepts and secrets to achieving professionally sounding results. So let's get started. 